So how do I determine if an exercise is functional for our system? Is it done standing or, or is it movement based? Very few sports are done sitting. Now for a wrestler, a lot of their wrestling is done on their knees. We actually make a wrestler lift on their knees. Does it uh, happen in appropriate angles? So again, if all my off season's done up and down, but yet I'm required to play a sport that goes back and forth or even at an angle, we're gonna make sure that they're lifting in the angle in the off season. Does it involve multi multiple body parts at the same time? So we're gonna work, again, the kinetic chains. We're gonna make sure that we're not isolating the glutes. We're gonna work the glutes, the hamstrings, and lower back together. We're gonna to teach the quads and the glutes to work together in conjunction with the lower back and hips. Is it unilateral or contralateral? So do we do things with one arm at a time? Because most of the time when we do stuff with bars, we're developing strength that can never be used. Think about a 300 pound overhead press. Go to dumbbells. Are we using 150 pounds a hand? Or are we dropping to maybe 100 pounds per hand? Then if we go to one arm at a time, are we still using 100 pounds a hand or are we dropping to 75, 80 pounds? So that's the usable strength. An 80 pound one arm overhead press is equal to in strength development, if not better than a 300 pound overhead press. Which one's gonna make a better athlete? Also for us, joint stability training, and I'm not talking about balance training because that's still up in the other air whether you can increase an athlete's balance, but you can increase their ability to deal with unstable surfaces and how, they, how their body deals with that. So if we can teach an athlete, you know, when something moves or their body's not um, ready for something or they get hit or a collision, how does my body react to that as opposed to having to stay in a stable stance all the time like we do in the off season? Nine months of unstable training, go out and play your sports for three months and it's all unstable. I think we're doing our athletes a disservice. For us also, rotational and diagonal core training. All power is derived from the, from the core. They've done studies after studies to show Strength doesn't develop in the legs first. When you go to exhibit a, a strength in a sports setting, the core muscles fire four to, four to eight microseconds before the legs ever engage. So the core has to be stiff for the legs to exhibit power through it. So you guys have a handout, and we, we actually took pictures. So uh, the crude drawing that I did a couple, a couple months ago is uh, pictures on the screen. So let's look at your athletes in a pushing example. In some ways, these things look relatively simple. All of our arrows are force arrows, and they're oversimplified. Trust me, I'm not thinking these are the only forces that's involved, but they're the simplistic ones. This athlete has to stabilize the core in the middle. He's pressing out there, so he's got a, a pushing comp uh, component, a core rotational component, and a leg strength component. If you look at him from behind, this inside leg, the, what on this picture is a left leg, I'm not sure what it is on yours, is doing hardly anything. If he picked that up, if he was leaning, it's not doing anything except stabilizing the hip minimally. You can see that his hips and his shoulders are not in a line. But I bet you all of our lifting in the off season requires the shoulders and hips to be in a line. But when we go to exhibit force in a sport, they're often unaligned. So when we try to do that overhead press with our body like this, we're gonna get injured. So we're asking our athlete, we're giving you 300 pounds of strength, try to use it. And you can see here that also, his hips are not in line this way or this way. Because the very rarely do we see a sport where two athletes hit head on 100% square and they just push each other. One athlete's trying to get around another, push into the other, knock one off balance, whatever. So again, is there a rotational component to your training? Or are we just having them do everything linear, everything in the sagittal plane? Position sports, I put a few sports up here, but anytime that two athletes are side by side pressing each other, there's a huge core component to this that most people are not training. So here our hips are not in a line. You can see there's a rotational trying to pull the athlete forward or push the athlete back. Do we do the core rotational train the way that we should? Do we tie the shoulders and hips together through the core? And we're not talking about sit-ups because they don't do that much. 
It looks great. Guys love lifting hundreds of pounds. There's a huge ego component with it. But are they able to translate that strength of their sport? Not even close. So would we rather have an athlete figure out how to get from that 30% pressing and some of these with one arm, one, standing on one leg, standing and pressing like this? Most athletes come to us, and it's somewhere between 6 and 7% of their body weight. Can they stand on one leg with a cable and press out? They can't stabilize it. Our elite athletes are 15%. We're not talking about tons of weight. A 200-pound person, we're only talking about 30 pounds of pressure in a standing position. Can they exhibit? So again, does the 300-pound bench press matter that much? Or do we need to teach the ankle, the knee, the hip, the abdominals, all four layers of them, the core muscles, the shoulder and wrist and elbow to work together as a unit, and we can exhibit a lot more strength than working the off-season. So this is, these are the core muscle groups that we work on, and they're movement patterns, not muscle groups. We work uh, transverse plane through the lumbar and thoracic region. A lot of times with the lumbar, we're actually going to brace with the middle, middle of our core so we can exhibit strength through the hips and through the thoracic region. Diagonal hip to iliac crest from here to here. We're going to use a lot, again, a lot of stability training for this. Do, can we get it anti-rotating? Then we're going to go to our power uh, complex, which is outside hip, to the shoulder. It's much, much longer. For here, it's the blue line. That's where power is shown. All of our throwing is done that way. All of our punching or pressing is done with this long diagonal. Do we balance side to side like this? Can we stabilize? And can we bend and stand up? Those are the exercises that we're going to focus on for the core, the movements. We're going to do those in a variety of ways, in multiple planes, multiple stability um, and instability training in the off-season to get the athlete to be able to engage those first before even worrying about whether their legs are firing or not. 